Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Listen, I'm glad to have you guys here on this thir Tuesday, the 31st of March, last day of March, 2020. You know, we got a lot of things happening. I'm going to talk about silver a lot, you know, and what's going on with silver. Uh, I'm going to talk about the Fed a lot today. Listen, uh, let's get going. Let's start the charts right here. And let's take a look at what's going on. The Federal Reserve has opened up a seventh liquidity facility to supply U.S. dollars to everyone in the world. <laughs> Basically, to supply U.S. dollars abroad to other central banks and stuff. So they're just going to pump the money in and they're going to own everybody. Basically, what it is, is if you want to figure all this in a nutshell is, the Fed's buying mortgage-backed securities. People hear, okay, they're buying mortgage-backed securities. You don't know what that is. That's your house. They own you now. They own your mortgage. Mortgage-backed securities. They've bought your house. They own you. They own your They own your land. They own your house. They own title. They're owning everyone. They're going to own everything. Now they're lending to these other central banks through this new seventh liquidity facility they're going to supply dollars you know they're they're basically printing the money from nothing it's not even money they don't even have to print it anymore they just push a button on the computer and they own their own they own the world uh, anyway so that's what's going on there now I want to talk about silver for a minute silver a lot of the things that I predicted that would come true with silver have already come to pass. Uh, things I've said on my show for years. I said how there would be a shortage of supply. We're in the shortage of supply right now. It's very difficult to buy retail silver. Uh, things like uh, uh, coin and bars, you know, and stuff like that. Small coins. Uh, coins of one ounce size. Very difficult to buy right now. Not impossible to buy, but you're going to have to pay big premiums. Uh, they do have limited supply still. You can still obtain it, but it's getting more and more difficult by the day. And they're not they're not able to replenish their... their so what we're actually seeing is uh, coin dealers are actually anxious now. And I predicted this would happen. The coin dealers aren't like they were uh, if you go back a, a year or two ago, you know, when, when they would they didn't want to buy your silver coins off of you and they wanted to give you less than spot price. Now, totally different. It's just flipped. And now you go to a, into a coin dealer and they want your silver coins, you know, and they want to pay you more than they'll pay you more than spot price. For them they'll pay you a premium for them actually and then they'll extend it out to their customers and and even with a larger premium that's what's going on you know and it's difficult now and they're not going to be able to replenish their supply because miners aren't mining right now you know and and so we're looking at a world right now where this is going to go on for a while and these premiums are probably going to increase rather than decrease and so we're detached now, fully detached from the spot price to the actual physical. You want physical. And, and the COMEX, you know, all of these paper short contracts, all this SLV, GLD, they're just going to settle in dollars. That's what they're going to do. And we've reached a point in time where a second thing that I said to you guys would happen is I said that they've been manipulating silver price down. You know, the silver manipulators. I say there's going to be a point in time in the future when they will manipulate the price to the upside. Well, we're there now, guys. It's very difficult for them to manipulate it to the downside now at this point. The silver price, the riggers, very difficult for them. Now they're going to start manipulating it to the upside and making just as much money on both sides. They made money manipulating it to the downside. Now it's easy for them to manipulate it to the upside, and that's where they're going to head. They're going to start making money manipulating it to the upside. Uh, so, you know, the spot price is too low. It's become dis detached from the physical price. The spot price is, is, is uh, it doesn't matter what it is anymore. <laughs> 
<laughs> because all you're buying is paper and settling in paper. What does it matter what the spot price is anymore? Uh, let's move on. Let's take a look at silver here. $13.99 for silver. It's down two cents on the day. Uh, that's what the uh, spot price is, you know. It, it does actually. It's not really true that it doesn't matter anymore. It does matter some. It does. It does have an influence on on the price of silver. That's why I still go over it. I go over it to make a record of what the spot price is. Uh, they might come back to mesh at some point in the future. In fact, I think they will. But you're going to see a significant uptick in the spot price. But when they come to mesh together, the spot price and the and the physical price again. Uh, you'll see a significant uptick. Uptick. Now, another thing that I've predicted for the future of silver is the silver to gold ratio. I said it's going to come back more to a normal, more like 40 to 1 or 60 to 1. It's going to come back to that. That hasn't happened yet. Okay, that's a prediction I made that hasn't happened yet. But it's coming, guys. It's coming. Uh, silver price is, is, is volatile compared to gold, but I don't find it that much more volatile than gold, to tell you the truth. You know, I hear a lot of talk about how volatile it is. I don't find it that much more volatile than gold. Anyway, we're looking at, uh, well, it's $14 right now for the spot price. Let's take a look at gold. Spot price for gold today, 1611 It's like we had a big dip down earlier in the day. But now it's leveled off more into its trading range. Let's take a look at cryptocurrency now. See what it's doing. Cryptocurrencies today are 181 billion market cap, 65.2% Bitcoin dominance, and we see a strength in Bitcoin. Uh, 64.58 for Bitcoin today. It's up a little bit. It's actually, you know, cryptocurrencies are actually doing rather well, considering considering the fact of, of, of what's happening in the world with this virus out there. Crazy virus, you know. Uh, I don't think it's going to be around a very long time. It's moving too fast, you know, and, and that's the thing, you know. And so its effect upon the markets, the markets are going to start front-running this at a certain point. They're going to start front-running the virus going into diminishing numbers. And that's ahead in our future, but they'll front run that. Uh, let's take a look now at the Dow Jones Industrial Average today and see what it's doing. Uh, you got to understand that these markets are, are all supported and they're being supported. And so this is not a real market. Uh, we're looking at, uh, it's up, uh, what, 101 points on the day, 22,429 for the Dow today. So uh, what we're looking at now with oil, let's check the oil price, you know, $20.46. It's up 37 cents on the day. I can't see the oil price maintaining stability because people are not consuming oil. It's dropped off huge. Uh, they were consuming, just before this crisis, they were consuming about 100 million barrels per day. It's dropped off to 75 and it's even dropping lower, million barrels per day. That's a 25% decrease in the use of oil worldwide. And, you know, unless they cut back production significantly, and it seems like a lot of these countries aren't willing to do that, you know, we're basically in an oil war, uh, to, and it's going to keep prices down because uh, for a while, anyway. Let's take a look now at U.S. Treasuries. <clears throat> I thought I just heard a cat meow. But there's no cats around here. Huh. Anyway, okay, U.S. Treasuries, the middle of the yield curve here. We got yields dropping, but on the long end, we got them rising, and on the short end, we got them rising. And it doesn't look like there's very much movement today, but I'm going to go over the U.S. 10 years at 0.68 and the U.S. 30 years at 1.33. So that's what U.S. Treasuries are doing today. Let's take a look at the U.S. dollar index today, 99.63 on the U.S. dollar index. And the dollar's going along sideways. 
I'm going to tell you about this dollar. <clears throat> we can get a tremendous amount of domestic inflation inside the United States. And I mean tremendous. And at the same time, have this dollar index going up. You know, because what they're doing is they're comparing it against other currencies that are losing value even quicker than the dollar. All the currencies are going down at the same speed. And so we can look at the dollar losing purchasing power tremendously, but going up on the U.S. dollar index at the same time. And uh, actually the Fed, you know, they're going to continue to flood the world with dollars, but at the same time they're buying the world. It's becoming owned by them. Thank you guys for listening to this show. Like and subscribe. Uh, give me a thumbs up, and we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.